Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Lee McCulloch and Tam McManus here with me in the studio. And if you want to join the football family, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you want all the breaking football news at your fingertips, then why not download the PLZ Soccer app as well. Uh, so lots to talk about and here's what's on the agenda. Philippe Clement hails Rangers skipper James Tavernier as the defender gets set to smash a goal-scoring record held by Iprox icon John Gregg. It's a crazy amount of goals. It's really crazy as a fullback. I don't know if there was ever a defender scoring more goals in Scotland or even in Europe. Brendan Rodgers admits the Celtic fans' angry reaction to the draw with Kilmarnock was understandable, but he vows to face this title challenge head-on. Frank McAvenny makes a bold claim over Celtic's league collapse as he backs Hoops boss Brendan Rodgers to turn the season around. Pep's supposed to be the best manager in the world. He couldn't make that team. But I, don't, I don't know how they could make that team. Neil Warnock blasts Aberdeen's elementary defending against Hibs as the Englishmen's wait for a first league win as Don's boss goes on. I bet they can't believe the goals they've scored, really. Um, you know, the elementary defending... Yeah, lots to talk about on the programme today. Let's uh, start by Rangers uh, going top of the table. 3-0 win against St Johnston. And suddenly, uh, the pendulum has swung dramatically, Lee. It has this weekend. It's, it's swung and I think Rangers have, have got togetherness about them. The, for the stands, the pitch, the manager saying all the right things. And, the, and if you look at Celtic, there's lots of <coughs> unrest in the stands uh, and it's transcending onto the pitch and I think Rangers as it stands this weekend I've got the upper hand there's some big big games coming Yeah did you even in your wildest dreams look at it and think with an 8 point advantage that Celtic would suddenly find themselves in turmoil I don't think many would have um, especially the way they were going and the points they were picking up although they weren't fluent I think uh, when you look at the manager they've got you've got to say they're going to keep going but I don't know. The players, are, for me, are just playing with no enough confidence. Uh, whether that's came from the stands or I don't know where. Um, but there's been a dramatic dip in form and I still see them turning it round and, and getting back to winning ways, though. Yeah, um, it's going to be interesting uh, to get your thoughts on overall um, where you think the power base lies and who's going to win this league, just based on where we are at the moment, because that's the nature of... Um, Week in, week out here, Rafi. <laughs> we like a wee. Let's have a look and see what it looks like now. Um, but as far as Rangers are concerned, you can tweak it every now and then, and it, and it looks as if it's, it's seamless. It looks as if if somebody comes in, they know the yeah. job to do. Um, Diamandis come in there and he's made a contribution. It was a great first goal. Yeah, I mean, I've been saying it uh, all last year, that the strength of Celtic was what was on the bench and what was coming on and turning it. That's completely changed now. Rangers have got it now. Rangers have got it in abundance. They've got it sitting on the bench. Anybody who comes on knows the, the standard that he's got to come up to and that's where they're getting the benefit of, you know, and, and everything's going well for everybody that's coming on is have a wee trick here or scoring a goal and... You know, that is where the momentum for me has, has changed. You know, I think, don't think Celtic are strengthened enough on the park and off the park. You could say, you know, I, I just my opinion, I think the back four at Celtic just now, if everybody was fit and they had all the players, international players, I don't think three of that back four would be playing. You know, and that's a big, big miss as well for any top team to have a back four that's been chopping and changing all year. Uh, and as far as Rangers are concerned, their captain is leading by example. He's now scored 120 goals. He's one away from being the highest scoring defender in the club's history. And the Rangers manager thinks it's remarkable. It's crazy amount of goals. It's really crazy as a fullback. I don't know if there was ever a defender scoring more goals in Scotland or even in Europe. So uh, he has a lot of qualities doing that, but not only with penalties because he scored also important other goals, like in the, in the cup final, for example, the League Cup. And he's doing a really good defensive job because in the first place, he's a defender for me, not an attacking player. So, Well, I'll tell you one thing about him. Some people might look and think it's a, a lottery taking a penalty king. I think there's an art to it and he certainly knows how to do it. 
I don't think it's as easy as people make it look look at times, Peter. Um, I think his record mm. from penalties in high pressure situations has been excellent. He's missed, <laughs> a, cu he's missed a couple, but n nobody's going to go through that amount of, of penalties without missing a couple. Um, but pressure was on at the weekend again. He comes up, trumps. As you said, he scored the winning goal in the cup final as well. So he's come up with big goals, not just penalties, but big goals from open play as well. And 120 goals for a, for a right back is a sensational return. Uh, and when it's all said and done, when he leaves the club and, and he retires, I think he'll be looked back fondly as one of the best players in Rangers history, to be honest. Yeah, um, one of the best players in Rangers history is a fullback. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, high praise indeed um, for you on that. He's been, he's been absolutely superb. Um, as far as the overall game was concerned, um, St Johnston were in it for quite a fair bit in the first half, and then, of course, Diamandi uh, scored that wonder goal, and then two penalties which left Craig Levine bemused. It's unbelievably unfair, you know. You see, when you spin, your arm comes out. Your arm comes out when you spin. I don't know what, how you're supposed to keep your arm in like that when you're spinning. And then, and, and the referee hasn't seen it, and it's the people in the, the booth, I call it, I say VAR, it's not VAR. It's, these guys uh, in the booth who are making calls that are baffling at times. Um... Mm. Craig's not happy with it. Let's digest it and discuss it, Ruffy. I thought the first one, yes, uh, it was a foul. It was a penalty. The second one, I can see where he's coming from, saying the boy wasn't looking at it. But unfortunately for him, the shot was going towards goal. You know, if the boy if hadn't hit the boy's hand, it was going towards goal. So it's thing being a goal scoring opportunity for me. It's a tough one to take. We've, sp we've sat on the show on numerous occasions saying this ball's hands in an unnatural position. It's got to be looked at. It's got to be, you know, sort of a broken down a wee bit to, you know, I'm not saying deliberate, but near enough it. Yeah, um, I, I think that the point that Ravi makes is in an unnatural position, whether he's looking at it or not, if it takes the ball away from the trajectory which it was going in, then the referees have really not got much other than to say, have a look at it, see what you think. Yeah, first one, Stonewaller. Second one, it's a penalty, but in my opinion, should not be a penalty. Um, this is the penalty debate that we were talking about last week. Um, he's no meant it. There's no intention of him a mm. bolt of hand. So... Listen, it's, it's a penalty, I get that, but in my opinion, it should not be a penalty. Two penalties for me, Peter. The, the first one's a, a great, it's a stone wall. The second one, the law of the land, the law of the rule book, is it's a penalty. Did you understand where Lee's coming I from? I totally understand, and it's, well, that's we're, something we're, that we're talking about this one now. We're going to be talking about another one later on when we come to another game. Oh, are we? Yes. <laughs> So, I mean, let's see how we get yes. well, let's, see, let's see how we get let's, let's, see how, let's see how we get around that one when it come to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can I just say to you, can I just say to you, Lee, there was in the early years of PLZ, we used to be on a radio show and I was going for an interview somewhere to interview somebody and we get caught up and we were late. So I said to him, Look, I'm not going to make it in time for the studio. You're going to have to open the show. And the big man was there with Ruffy, and I could hear the panic in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> so I'm driving towards it. I've turned the radio on, and it starts the music. He goes, Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Peter's not here. <laughs> Priceless. Anyway, apart from anything else, still great to have you here <laughs> 10 years on. Um, suddenly, favourites, would you say, for the title, Rangers? Yeah, definitely, Peter. I think that the momentum is with Rangers now. Um, as Lee said, there's a togetherness in the stands, on the pitch, you know, off the pitch. Everything's, everyone's pulling in the same direction, and that's not the case at Celtic. Celtic are fractured at the minute. There's you no know, complaints about the team, about the manager, about the board, and... You know, you would think Rangers would be firm. Rangers might go this season, lose four games to Celtic and still win the league. That, that's that's quite possible with the points that Celtic are dropping against the rest at the minute. Mm. I know they can win the league. Do you think Rangers will win the league now? Yes, I do. I, I think the momentum is such a big thing uh, in the game. Uh, the players are playing with so much confidence. 
um, if they go over the next two games, which is Hearts at home and I think it's Kilmarnock away, which is two form teams, then it's odd in the old Firm game. That's at home. I, I think that they've definitely got enough. They've got a calm manager that's been over the course before, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean to say Celtic won't go right to the final day with it. Ruffy? Yeah, I would agree with Lee that the next two games are important, but if you look at the Celtic team, I don't think there's enough Celtic big players just now. You're looking at the big players, you're looking at Cal McGregor, who does his bit, but he does the win games for you. I don't think the Celtic team just now have got match winners in the team. Obviously, they lost Jota, Abad is not playing, Kyogo scored at the weekend, but he's been up. But you're looking around the team going, where are the... Where the, where's something special coming? Riley's been off the boil massively yeah. since he never gets his move you know, as well. And, and I've already said the back the back <coughs> four is just a mess. You know, there's nobody playing with confidence. There's nobody. There's no a unit there. There's no two guys in the centre who know in, each other inside out and have been playing with each other for years. So they're struggling there. And for a Celtic team, for the star man at home, it'd be Joe Hart. You know, that shows you that there's, there's it's not happening. Yeah, let's. Um, uh, I must admit, a couple of weeks ago, I thought he might have been able to just steady the ship. I, I think, looking at this, I agree with Lee. I think Rangers, I think Rangers are going to win the league. I just do not see anything that suggests to me a spark. Uh, you know, a goal somewhere um, that could come from Celtic. You mentioned match winners. I, I watched the game Celtic against Kilmarnock, and slow and, and predictable. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, we we, all, we spoke about the the close season signings not impressive by any manner of means. You know, relying on Hatati coming back, Maeda coming back, and Cameron Vickers coming back. You know, and that that just hanging on to a, a bit of hope, but uh, that hasn't happened, and it, it looks as if it's going to be too late. Yep, it's a big challenge for them. It ended up 1-1. Celtic had taken the lead. They had other chances, but of course, Joe Hart also had to step up. Kelly had opportunities to score as well uh, until they eventually got that equaliser. And at the end of the game, some fans are singing sack the board. Um, some people obviously looking at Brendan Rodgers second time around and wondering um, what has happened. This is what the manager had to say at the end of that 1-1 draw. Uh, I can totally get the reaction of the supporters, even at one nothing. They won't have been happy with that performance. Uh, we'll be doing everything we possibly can to get the team into a better place for a positive result. I like a challenge. I've had to fight all my career, and this is another great challenge. Well, <clears throat> dare I say it, <clears throat> the, the fans can shout sack the ball until they're blue in the face, um, but it's not going to happen. There won't be a change. At boardroom level, um, I think there's too much power in the boardroom um, and too much, too many things that they're in control of that they're not going to change. Celtic fans are just going to have to, in my opinion, ride this out painfully to the end of season and and watch and see if the manager is actually just going to, you know, steer this ship, you know, off course. Yeah, it, it looks that way at the moment. Yeah, Celtic, you know, Brendan and Celtic, the team can't capitulate. If they do that, then then Rangers will win the league. I think it's now down to the players and the manager. You know, forget the board. You know, the squad's the squad. But Celtic have got now, in my opinion, should still be good enough to win the league. You know, he's, he's signed players. He also said that his, he'd get the final say on players. You know, there's a lot of, you know, conjecture about that, Peter, about who was bringing the players in. He, he's on record as saying he'd the final say on players. So there's no excuses there for him either. And it's down to him and the players now to... To start winning games again, you know, and I think they've the last ten games have won eight and, and drew two, but the the two draws have been in the league, and Rangers have won I think eight or nine out of nine, and that's not going to be good enough. Celtic need to win every game now. They've got a team, they're coming up against a team who are just winning every week, and that that puts pressure on the other team. Celtic have done it for years to Rangers, and now it's flipped. And Celtic need to win. They need to win games. They've got Motherwell away at the weekend. They need to go and win that. And they need to just try and stay, you know, neck and neck with Rangers until that old firm game at Ibrox, where Celtic have had upper hand in the old firm games over the last few seasons. Yeah, I think to get a, a sense of balance mm. on it, nothing has been won and lost. Um, there's still a long way to go, but uh, as Lee has mentioned, momentum, the way the teams are playing, uh, the eventual outcome in matches, I think is giving you that real sense that Rangers have the upper hand. Uh, of course, 
The buck stops with the manager, as mm -hmm. Tam McManus rightly points out. If he can't get it right, second usually in Glasgow means the sack. Um, Frank McAvenny was chatting today out at Celtic Park and he reckons even one of the best managers in Great Britain couldn't get a trick out of that Celtic team. Who are you going to bring in? I mean, listen, Pep's supposed to be the best manager in the world. He couldn't make that team. But I, don't, I don't know how they could make that team because it's all about confidence. Mm. It's about It's about... You know, some of the players, if, if you've got to, you know, it's all right when you're winning, as I said, but grow a set, stand up and be counted, because if you're looking at Kilmarnock and saying, individually they're better than you, then that's not right for Celtic. You can yeah. blame the board, you can blame the manager, you can blame the players, whatever. But the bottom line for me is the players are not good enough. The players that are on that park, Kilmarnock are not scared to Celtic. Coming to Celtic Park, people were scared to come here and play. Mm. They're not anymore, because it's, you know, I'm sorry to say, but it's average players. I, th I think he talks a lot of sense. He does, Peter. And, and I, I spoke about it last week about the Celtic back four in particular. You know, we, obviously I played, we, me and Lee played at the same time. If you come up against a Celtic team back in the day, it was Mialbe. You had Mialbe, it was Valharan, it was Baldi, it was Stan Varga. You know, now, no disrespect, you're coming up against Scales, Welsh, Burnaby and... Anthony Ralston. If I'm a striker, I'm, I'm a Kamalak striker, a Kamalak player, or a manager, I'm looking at that Celtic back four and going, we're going to have a go today. I don't think they're getting the back. We're going is to have a go. There's a mitigating circumstance because they've lost Carter, Vickers, and obviously Hatati. They've lost, they've lost players, but they've signed, they've signed two guys, Noroki and <coughs> Lager Belka, who are they paid good money for them. They're no, nowhere to be seen. They keep playing the two centre backs. I've got to get, agree with Frank. I think a lot of the players are not, don't, don't look good enough and up to it, Peter, to win yeah. the league this I, season for Celtic. My biggest criticism of Rangers, when, when Rangers weren't playing particularly well, I didn't think the players they brought in could handle the situation. They're in a big crowd, they're 50,000, things aren't going well, people start hiding, you know, and... And they're not up for it. I think it's reversed now to Celtic. I think the players, it's, some of the players at Celtic have signed are not up for when things aren't going well. They're okay when they're winning two and three, nothing. Yeah. But when there's a bit of pressure and there's 60,000 people missing. going with, they start getting into a wee bit of a shell and say, well, here you have it. You do something and I think that's what's happening now at Celtic. Well, well, my view on the whole situation is quite simply, the buck does stop with the manager, Ruffy, but I think he's been... I think he's been sold short. I don't agree with you on the fact that he said he, he, he might he might be in a situation where it's either this player or he, you're not. He's, getting, he's on record as saying he get the final <coughs> say, but Peter he well, did come well, out say that, Brendan. If you get the final say in one player and there's only one player standing in front of you and the window's about to close, what do you say? You know, because for me, the ones for the future, the strategy after two thousand and three, is basically a financial strategy now. The, the, the performances in European football has not been good enough. They've had a range of side that haven't been in the league, so they were able to canter through and win without really pushing the board out financially. Rangers are back, they're getting better, they're providing competition. The Celtic fans have already had to suck up the debacle of the COVID year uh, and losing out in 10 in a row. The recruitment is wrong, the strategy is wrong, and the manager, who I think is a really good coach, He's come back the second time. I merely pointed out the circumstances of his departure the first time, but he's back the second time and he's just, it's not happening for him. And he's not helped by the fact that, they, as Ruffy pointed out, there is a collection of mediocre players who are not good enough to wear the Celtic jersey. And if you think I'm just talking through a hole in my backside, mm -hmm. have a look at the stats. Go and watch them week in, week out. They're not good enough. And mm -hmm. some of the players that he signed... He's not even playing them. He won't yeah. play them. When you look at his track record, they sign in players. It's actually quite good, isn't it? Like your Edwards and mm -hmm. and, and a couple of other, especially the Sinclair. forward players. Like that. That's what he's been proven in this season. I would. They're not his type of players for me. The, the players that have come in, and it tells you everything. If he's not playing his signings, he's either hanging himself out there to dry for the board. Or he's basically saying, I didn't really fancy them in the first place. And those guys are players we've already got. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that for me is is not a worthwhile buyer, Ruffy. Well, that that's why the supporters are up in arms. They they, they came out at the the AGM or whatever it's called and told everybody the money they had in the bank. I mean, when you tell supporters that 
supporters expect that money to be spent and they expect, they expect to see players on the park who are the quality of the money that you've got. And everybody knows what's dangling at the end of this season. It's automatic entry. It's what, another, what, 40, 60, 60, 60 million pounds? Yeah. Why would you mess about with it in January? Why would you not just say, and I know Neil's come on and some of the guys in January's know the window. You know, to bring in players, but sometimes you've got to take a gamble. Well, it's a six. Look at the end of it. It's a £60 million roll of the dice, which is not unusual. There's been a number of years where there's been a roll of the dice in this strategy, and it hasn't worked out. And this is just another one where ultimately for Rangers, £60 million, Lee, is a massive change of direction for Rangers. Of course it is. Of course it is. And I think. They've been, the, the way they've been working, they've obviously clearly not had that sort of money. So if there's a carrot there to go and get that sort of money, you better believe they'll be, <laughs> they'll be trying to get it. And, and I'm with Ruffy. I think we all know the January transfer window is the hardest to get players in. It's the most expensive. But at that time, Celtic didn't have a massive gap. It, didn't, it wasn't a foregone conclusion that they were going to go and win the league. So for me, it's let's maybe spend four, five, six million of that money and get one real top striker in to help Kyogo. Yeah, um, here's the, the, the stats since uh, Philippe Clement came in against uh, Brendan Rodgers. Um, and there you have it, uh, 26 games, 22 wins, three draws, one loss, 59 goals scored, 13 conceded and for... Brendan Rodgers, 24 games, 15 wins, 5 draws, 4 losses, 52 scored and 22 conceded. Um, and, you know, I think it's been pointed out that his record, um, certainly... And it's not his, not his... He inherited players that weren't his and were getting slaughtered as well. So I think they've got to give Philip Clement unbelievable credit for what he's gotten out of the players who were written off as duds, not only by supporters, but probably on the show by us. And he's getting a tune out of those guys as well, so... I think his record there, they're scoring more goals in Celtic, they're conceding less goals. Everything's pointing towards a Rangers t title win. OK, give us your view on it. We'd like to hear what you have to say in the feed below. And of course, right across our social media, uh, we will uh, obviously try and give you the results of various polls that we put out uh, on uh, PLZ Soccer on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, Instagram, TikTok, and right across our YouTube channel. Let's not move on without giving credit to a manager whose stature as he gets older and older gets better and better and the respect comes. Uh, and that is, of course, Derek McInnes, because to go to Celtic Park, yes, you're going to ride out a storm, but you still have to mm -hmm. take your chances. They took one, Ruffy. They had a couple more. They certainly did. Uh, Joe Hart had a couple of good saves, but uh, they were more than equal to, to Celtic in the, the last stages of the park. And they, I know he was... Pretty downbeat and saying he was happy getting one each with that, but I think deep down he would have thought he could have won that. You know, obviously it was there for the taking. I know Celtic had chances, but come on, it just said as, as, as many as them. But uh, I think the credit you've got to give Derek is he's came in, was it a couple of seasons now, come on, and, and year on year, year on year, he's brought in a better player. He's, he, 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 I think he, he knew exactly what he wanted, but it's taken a couple of years to get the players to play the way he wants them to play. And I think of, of all the teams, I think they've been the most progressive uh, in bringing quality, better players into Kilmarnock. Yeah, as well as younger players, which he's giving them the chance as well. He's also looked at it with his board and the board have said, listen, year on year we're going to back you here he's, I mean he was able to push the ball out get Van Veen when the other two were chasing him uh, he's brought Greg Stewart back obviously Greg Stewart might be looking at and say okay I'm in the twilight of my career um, but he still made a contribution at the weekend um, what David, when come on the David weekend. Watson yeah. um, and of course let's not forget we've mentioned uh, Vassell week in and week out uh, that we like as a player and, and of course we also like Danny Armstrong when he first took over he got promotion then stabilised and now <coughs> What's he gone for now? Fourth. Um, it's amazing the job he's done. Um, and when you look at his team, they're hard to play against. Um, he's no keeping the pitch for next year. He's wanting to go back to grass, use the training centre. And I think he deserves an enormous amount of credit for getting the best out of um, obviously a good group of players. When there's a bit of success coming on the pitch or there's a carrot there at the end of the season, which is going to be top six or fourth, then he's getting back to the board to, who I really deserve the most amount of credit. Um, 
Billy Bowie, lifelong Kilmarnock fan, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to get success on the pitch. And even appointing uh, Derek at the start, uh, it's, it's a great signing to get the manager uh, for Kilmarnock to have him as manager. And then they're just progressing year on year under him. So I think he's he's one that's done for manager of the year. I know Stephen Naismith will be spoken about, Philippe Clement will be spoken about, but I think he's he's a real contender for it. Yeah, I'm <clears> glad <throat> you said that because uh, obviously <laughs> obviously by the time we get, by the time we get to that, if Clement wins <laughs> wins the league, they just hand it to him, <laughs> and then and then you get to you know congratulate so various people, <laughs> various people that you like. Oh, Derek, I, I, I did say you should have been nominated, <laughs> you know. But uh, it's true, though, isn't it? It's true. At it's true. Moment. It is at this moment right. in time. Yeah. It's true. The forums are yet for the voting. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming out next month, Ruffy. Before we talk about Aberdeen and Hibs uh, in that game, uh, Michael Beale sacked. Yes. 12 games in charge. Woof, that's brutal, isn't it, down there? Well, they, they know the money that's up, up for grabs down there and there's just no happening for them. But I think episodes on the park and off the park have they been going particularly well so I think they've obviously decided that uh, they need a new man they, they don't mess a bit then they if they decide you know the guy then you know the guy and you're out and unfortunately for him he's out yeah absolutely it's uh, well a nice payoff for him well not only a nice but two and a half year deal as well Tom no, 12 games isn't it yeah and, and if it was the documentary Sunderland Till I Die it would have been absolutely brilliant to be a fly in the wall wouldn't it Aye. Um, because that is that is brutal down you here you say all the time don't you if you're sitting in the house and you're a manager waiting in a job and the phone goes and it's the guy for Sunderland you just go no <laughs> well, I, listen, I mean honestly there are certain jobs that I call the poison chalice Sunderland is one of them where I would think don't touch it with a barge pole I can remember um, have they not got different owners now though than, than when it's a young, it's a young, it's a young boy it's a young boy in it yeah, but, but like, inherited I, I the remember money. interviewing Steve Bruce who mm -hmm. really was a good manager yep. and he'd, he'd done well with them and then they'd gone through a little bad patch note they bumped him and from there they've just gone through countless went from manager to manager oh. Jack Ross took them close to getting them up, didn't he? Yeah. Mm. And then obviously get a sack. They've had a good resume of a managers, but it's a big, big club that. Yeah, it's a fantastic club, but it just can't I just I just think if somebody's going to Sunderland, you know, make sure you've started buying property and just start renting out flats. Yeah, the, the, the expectations <laughs> at the club and amongst the fans. I've watched Sunderland today, I watched the I actually watched the last series the other day. Um and the expectation, the passion of the fans is incredible down there and they expect to be in the Premier League. You know, and they were in League One for a couple of seasons as well. And then in the Championship, they shouldn't have sacked Tony Mowbray. Tony Mowbray had them round about the, the playoffs, and, the, and, the, and it was yeah. quite popular down there. I, don't, I played under Tony Hibbs, good manager, and they shouldn't have sacked him. He goes and beat, he, he puts a final nail, Michael Beale's coffin. They beat them on Saturday, eh, Birmingham. So, 12 games. I thought it would lasted a little bit longer than that, but I, yeah. I didn't expect him to do much down in Sunderland. Yeah. Um, well, I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, wow. Well, Tony Mowbray. Lee Johnson right. was there. Yeah, uh, Alec, Neil, there night. Alec Neil, Lee Johnson. Uh, and then, of course, uh, I'm looking Phil Parkinson, uh, Jack Ross, Chris Coleman was there, Simon Grayson, David Good Moyes, there, Sam right? Allardyce, Dick Advocat, David Moyes, Gus Poyet, Kevin Ball, Paolo De Canio, Martin O'Neill. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned, back in 2009, Steve Bruce. And from there, my God almighty, Ruffy, there's been a few... Ted Laszlo, no. Ted Laszlo no, wasn't no, no, no. in there at the time. Or they <laughs> might, have, might have won a, might have won <laughs> a, <laughs> might have won a cup. <laughs> Ted Laszlo. <laughs> uh, Aberdeen to Hibs to... Are you happy with the point? Not really, to be honest with you. I think that Aberdeen have been poor this season and Hibs... Hibs have not won a league game since December the 9th. You know, it's nearly two months without a League One. Uh, they're three three points out of the last twenty four. Not on a great run of form, Peter, and they've got they've got a huge game coming up on Saturday. They've got Dundee at home, who are five points ahead of them in that final spot in sixth. If Dundee go eight points ahead of them, I think Hibs can forget about the top six, which in February is 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 not good enough. Do you think he's under pressure? No, I don't think he's under pressure, Peter. Um, I think he'll he'll get to the summer, but the fans need to see something. They're, they're on a poor run at the minute. They've got two huge games coming up. They've got Dundee at home, then they've got Hearts away. Uh, and they've got to take four points out of that. It's maybe even six points to have a chance of getting in the top six because I think your your top six will be 
Hearts, Bill Firm Hearts, St Man Kilmarnock. I think the one spot will be Aberdeen, Dundee or, or Hibs. Which it's the way they're starting games as well. Boyle scores early. They go one nothing up. They lose a goal straight away. Which the fans will turn on the Aberdeen team. They're just leaking goals. A couple of minutes after it, they, they, they lose a the goal, Peter. And they've got goals in them, Hibs, at the minute, but they can't keep a clean sheet yeah. for the trophy. And what did they that, say to you at the start of the season? Yeah, defensively, they're poor, Peter. Um, and he needs to strengthen that area. But the next two games are, are, are massive for Hibs to get in the top side. Dundee, Dundee at home is a must win on Saturday. Yeah, and then Hearts. And then Hearts away. So... As I say, the season could be over, you know, and obviously still in the Scottish Cup. With Bournemouth getting involved, it puts them under pressure. Yeah, because I think that the, I think that Bill Foley will obviously have the year of okay, uh, Kensal and, and guys like that in it, in it Hibs. And that could be a decision that he's made at the end of the season. It's not his man. Um, yeah. But yeah. he needs to show something, Peter, for now at the end of the season that yeah, we can see where we're going. It's not quite there yet. And he's no excuses now, Peter. He's got a full squad. They're packed, they're stacked up front, you know, they've got plenty of options and they've not won a game in two months, so he needs to start winning games. OK, let, let me make a prediction then, since you two ex-heavies are here. I um, always like to throw a grenade in the works here, but I, I can see Hibs winning. Uh, I'm going to go to the game on Saturday to see them against Dundee. I can see them winning that one. So uh, that's uh, it. Road. Easter, Easter Road. Easter Road. Easter Road. Right. And then the Derby. Then oh, the Derby. They're going to get. They're going to get battered. Oh, they'll get battered. They'll get battered at Easter Tyne Road. Eh, Tyne Castle. Sorry. They'll win against Ross County and they'll bow to the Cup to Rangers. There's the next month. You know that's a. That's my call on it, Ruffy. Do you see it any different? No, I don't see any different. But I still think there'll be a top six team. I think eventually. You think so? This season? Yeah. this season? Yeah. This season? This <laughs> season? Yeah. Yeah. But five points yeah. are drifted in D at the minute and they play them on Saturday. That's nothing. Yeah. It's a good shout I mean, from you, Ruffy. Top well, six, I've been I mean, saying that about Livingston <laughs> with Ross County and you were all like, ah, oh, nah, there'll be, there'll be. Remember? Yeah, but oh, do you know that, remember that? That's that? because the three of us like to give you a right doing. Oh, <laughs> I'm happy with that. I said, I said Livingston were relegated in this show and if they don't I'm expecting David Martindale to just have a pop yeah absolutely I would um, take it I would take it you did say that they're, going down it. they're still going down um, I don't think they are going down I think they're going to be playoffs I know we'll come to that sorry yeah. I'm no, but I, think, I, think, I think that's the good thing about it is, is that that overall opinion on uh, you know the way the games go week in week out you can generally start to yeah. see something well, of a pattern emerge you know with some teams that are just not on that form and he's highlighted Hibs Aberdeen is another classic case now Neil, Neil Warnock is a good manager and even after the game he's highlighted what the problems are at uh, Aberdeen Can't fault the lads I thought the effort was super I thought we played some good stuff at times today Um and the only thing missing was a clean sheet to win the game, really. I mean, we've, uh, I bet they can't believe the goals they've scored, really. Um, you know, the elementary defending mistakes. And uh, I know they don't do it on a purpose, but wow, it is disappointing when you put so much effort in into a game and you go behind again and have to come back again, you know. He doesn't have the players that he's been used to before. Mm. This is a weak, similar to Hibbs. I can remember us all looking at Aberdeen and saying, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out from Stephen Glass to Jim Goodwin. <clears throat> when we go to Barry Robson, Aberdeen's back line has not been sorted out. Yeah, the, and the goalkeeper hasn't been performing the way he was last year as well. He was outstanding. Uh, again, it's for me, it's the centre-halves. They've never had a dominant centre-half, a partnership. Then, and I always think if you've got a good partnership with centre-halves, it's a, it's a start. You start building forward as you go along. The, Aberdeen have got some nice players uh, in their team. I like McGrath, you know. But you, when you get any a, a run of losing goals like that, it's very, very difficult to get yourself out of it because you're sitting in the dressing room knowing that somebody's going to have to score one more than what they are. Yeah, belter of a game this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, I know. By the way... You can't beat them. Yeah. He's going to need to score one more than what they are. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. That's just cutting edge punditry. That's just cutting edge punditry. That's just cutting edge punditry. That's just cutting edge punditry for Ruffy. Hey, hey. No, but you're, by the, way. No, the point I'm waiting, mate. The point I'm making is <laughs> you're, you're sitting in right. the dressing room knowing you're going to lose goals. Exactly. Right. You know you're going to lose goals. If you score two, you win a game at least. Yes. Is that the point you were trying to make? looking around the dressing room going, who's going to be the guy he yeah. scores more than them. Absolutely. And I don't think I've got See, that. the difference, with, because I know the way you operate, Ruffy, you can make that point short <laughs> and sharp, right? But sometimes league is on the BBC where they've got to yeah. do a full 52 paragraphs to get to the uh, eventual point. So he's not used to... We've not got an cue. Yeah, absolutely. We're just... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Peter, what were saying about the two penalties? What were saying about the oh. Aberdeen penalty and the Hibs penalty? Marshall, do you think that was a penalty? The the punch? I, I don't. I think. I think he wins. He, I hate goalies, you know, I hate goalies. Yeah. I, I, I would always side on the striker, but I think he punches the ball and then catches him. I think Devlin is a penalty. I think it comes off his hand. I thought it was yeah. a penalty. Lee? Devlin, penalty, uh, Marshall, no penalty. Right, OK. Yeah. Ruffy? I actually use my phone for VAR, <laughs> at the, the Aberdeen one. You know how the VAR boys, they see all the different angles and that? Yeah. I, I made my phone bigger <laughs> to, see, <laughs> to see where to it see. hit. And, and it's down here. Yeah. So what are they seeing? The Devlin obviously. Right. <coughs> what are they seeing? Yeah, penalty. Yeah. Stone wall. Should have been a penalty. Okay. What um, about the Marshall one? No, I'd have taken his head off. <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'll tell you one place where it is, Rosie, in the garden is Tyne Castle. Hearts mm. to Motherwell nil, and the bandwagon just keeps rolling on now, and there's a real feel-good factor and some nice football and he's got options, looks good. It's entertaining, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, they're getting the ball forward as quick as possible and the, the players that are getting it are entertaining, they're, they're scoring terrific goals, you know, and we, I like the wee boy Forrest, I think he gives you something, you know, and once he's in that, run about that 18-yard box, you know something's going to happen and the people inside the box are waiting on it, mm -hmm. you know, yep. so... I think he's been a big, big player, but no, and his signings as well, the people that he's brought in uh, are doing particularly well. Yeah, let's see if Tam can count quickly to see how many there are. It's, it's 11, 10 wins and a draw from the last 11 games. It's That's brilliant, isn't it? sensational form. That must be the best for and, and, and the years. It's, aye. it's 11 wins and 12. Aye, 11 wins and 12, and they've, yeah. obviously they've got Rangers away. And then they're not that far off of Celtic, Peter. I think they're nine points behind Celtic or ten points. Uh, oh, oh, here it comes. Yep. No, no I'm not. I'm just saying if they go to Rangers and win, they, they can have real aspirations of going and maybe closing that gap even further. But I don't see them going to Ibrox and winning the game. But it'll be a tough game for, for Rangers when the form that Hearts and Hearts have already been to Parkhead and won comfortably 2 nothing. So they're a team, and it hurts me to say it really sticks in my throat, they're a team that's playing really good good football at the minute. Well, listen, it's not it's not as daft as you think it is because Stevie Naismith thinks uh, there's certainly potential there to chase down that second place. No, we're still a bit ahead, aren't we? So, um, yeah, I think, as I said before, we'll get to April, May time, and if you're fortunate enough to be close enough, then you can dream. But for us, it's just keep winning games. The gap will be bigger. We, we know where we want to go as a squad, but as I've consistently said, it's week to week. I think I think the way we managed the game today, the way our speed of attack was was really good. These are the real things I'm, these are real markers for me of progression which ultimately should lead to success. Well, you look at his side, uh, everybody's battling, he's got a bit of creativity, he's got wide men who can cross the ball into the box as well as having a goal scorer in Shanklin. He's got other people chipping in, Ruffy. Yeah, and the midfield in particular, you know, I think that's a big engine for them, you know, and as I already said there, when you've got forward players who just want the ball, see, we're talking about teams early on, particularly Celtic, you know, a lot of their players don't want it. Anybody in a forward position in Hearts, give me the ball and I'll do something special, you know, and, and generally it brings out a goal. Are you happy with them? Are you looking at them and thinking yeah. really positive? Really positive. Neuenhoff, Vargas, uh, Kent, really good signings. Joe Savage, um, obviously a big part of bringing them in, deserves a lot of credit. But away from that, Nasey deserves a lot. Nasey's a good coach, said it's for day one. I think the stutter at the start was trying to find the identity, was trying to change the shape that, that the players that were used to probably for about a year and a half before that. But he's got that continuity in the team. Um, it's not all about Lorne Shanklin, although he's purple patch, like flying, best striker probably in the league. nazi has got them organised, got them playing good football. He's got them not just keeping possession for the sake of possession, which arguably it was like a couple of seasons before that. He's playing angry football, he's getting balls in the box and that's what Shanklin feeds off. So he's playing to the, the strengths and they're flying in third. Um, can they break the old firm? I'm not sure, but they've definitely, for me, cemented third place. Mm, what a period coming up though, Tom. It's, it's Rangers, Hibs and Celtic. Yeah, they've got three tough games, Peter, and you'll, I think you'll know. Then they've got obviously Morton away in the Scottish Cup. I think you'll, you'll know after that period 
what their aspirations are. I think I agree with Jag. I think third place is tied up. I think they've they've, they've done that in a canter. And he'll just be taking one game at a time. Three massive games coming up. Um, it just shows you, you know, football's a funny game. You remember the last game of the season, Hearts against Hibs. You know, Lee Johnson was a manager of Hibs. If Hibs won that game, they went above Hearts. Yeah. Last game of the season. And, and, I, and I, I, I don't think that Nate Smith would have got the job in the summer if that happened. That was such a big game for both clubs. Hearts went down to 10 men. Hibs, you know, at the end of the game, were, were coming on strong. Could have won it. And Hearts just managed to get that drawn and Naismith got the job the following season. So it's just sliding doors moments like that, small things in football, where he's now flying at Hearts. Whereas if, that, if Hibs had won that game, he might not even be the manager. So fair play to him, he's doing a, he's doing a terrific job at Hearts. Yeah, um, Ruffy, when I look at the top six, um, you know, you're looking at Dundee and I'm saying to myself, they've got a wee bit of a cushion over Hibs. Aberdeen haven't really kicked on. Dundee got a good win over mm -hmm. Ross County. That six at the moment is going to take something really, you know, you know, it's going to have to take a, a, a run of form from Hibs and Aberdeen. They're going to have to get their skates on if they're going to stop that becoming the final top six. I wouldn't be comfortable in the two of them doing it, but I expect one of them, you know, to dig themselves out of a hole and push themselves in there. Uh, I think in Aberdeen in particular, they've got a striker, you know, who might be the guy to take them up there. You know, Tam's already touched on Hibs. You know, consistency has not really been there, and he's brought in a few players there in the window. So, both teams will expect him to kick on, but uh, I, I'm just wondering if St. Martin and Dundee and them can hang on to the form that they're on the now because they've not got the same pool of players as everybody else. Dundee's playing well. Dundee are playing brilliant. They've got a good manager. His first season in management, isn't it? And mm. well, he knows the game inside out. He's been with Derek McInnes at Aberdeen, he's been to cup finals. He's been third in the League of Europe. He's been second in the league at times as an assistant. So he knows the Scottish game inside it. He's a good coach. He helps with coach, ed coach education at the SFA as well. Um, so he's on the field stuff's brilliant. But his recruitment's been good as well. Um, I really hope for his sake they get top six. I said at the start of the season they would be bottom or playoffs. And how wrong have I been? And that's that's fine with me. Yeah, it's, uh, Ruffy was the same. So. <coughs> don't worry, but there are some things that we get right, some things we get wrong. You just yeah. have to hold your yeah. hands up and uh, hope yeah. you don't meet the manager right. in the, in just, the next couple of weeks. I just did the anticipating them getting eleven loan players for other teams. Some things that doesn't work, Ruffy. You've got to interview them, them and jail them, and jail them all. There's an assistant that then they were under Lee Clark. You yeah. know, so that, that I, I think it was more than eleven. And it, it didn't really work. I think that's, he's talking I, about Tony Dockery, I think that's good for the, the coaches, him and Stuart Taylor, and integrate all of them and, and mould them into a team. It's difficult to do with all the own players. I, 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 would, I would disagree with that. Make you don't think it's difficult with all the own players? player there who's been at Dundee for a while and you've committed yourself to a two or three year contract, you're expecting to get a chance. Okay, if you've got a chance and you're not playing particularly well, you don't deserve to be in the team. But I remember it happened with Hibs. Hibs got to a final once with about five or six players. Yeah. And got absolutely horsed. And I think the unity side of it, it's okay when you're winning. No, nobody, nobody gives a hoot where they've come from. But when things start going the other way, people start saying, well, why have we got them? They're not really our players. But that's great credit to their manager. Oh, it's great. Well, that's, you know, and he's been honest enough. He's come out and says, I don't care what you think. You know, that's the way I'm taking Dundee. At this moment in time, financially, that's the way I'm taking this team forward. And it's working, so... I think the other thing about it, Lee, is in this division, because of the standard at times that's dropped, if you can get a loan player that suddenly elevates the standard and you've got players who might be on two- and three-year deal, deals that are just not good enough, and, and by the way, I'm not just isolating Dundee, you know, anything from Celtic to Rangers to Hibs to Hearts, Aberdeen, we've all commented on players who've had two and three year deals who are just not good enough. Well, any new manager coming in, it's an easy one for them. They can say, listen, he's not going to be part of my plan, so I need to go elsewhere. As a manager, you're always looking for one, two percent to get better. And if there's a player there that you think's better than what you've got, then you're going to utilise it and bring him in. The, the, the beauty of the <clears> loan is... It's shorter term than a two or three year contract. You're not stuck with them. And you're not stuck with them. You can put them back or you can attempt to sign them at the end of it. It's like a little bit uh, try before you buy. That's not bad for me. Yeah, try, try yeah absolutely. You buy, yeah. Absolutely. You're, uh, <laughs> honestly, you're it's, <laughs> But that's that's the, the general outlook for the manager. And that, he'll be, that's exactly what he'll be doing. And not every loan, the first loans are always the biggest gamble because um, alternatively they'll, they'll be 
younger moving away from home the first time. Your second and third loans are the ones that are not as big a gamble, that are, meaning the players have already been in loan two and three times. That's the ones that, that managers try to home in on. Yeah. Uh, so they're proven. Two great goals for Tiffany, somebody that Ruffy knows well. Yeah, I, I, I saw uh, the manager talking about him, saying it's taken him a wee while to settle down, you know, from the champions up there. Uh, he is quite a shy boy, believe it or not, you know, and uh, when he's playing well, buzzing, when he's not playing well, he goes in, no one of the players that goes into a wee bit of a shell. A shell. But yeah. uh, the two goals that he scored the weekend, they'll get the best out of him for the rest of the season. Livingston won St Mirren nil suddenly. We put the kiss of death in. Davies managed to get a trick. We put the kiss of death in Robinson, didn't we? Yeah, I'm sorry. Anyway, there's another manager. Not back on. No, no, no. There's another manager who's coming in next Monday, and he'll be hoping we've not put a kiss of death on him. Um, okay, so Livingston won St Mirren nil. Davy finally gets a trick out of the team, gets the win. But for me, the lovely story is Shamal George and. You know, his mum's uh, been diagnosed with cancer. Mm. She's in the crowd watching him. He saves a penalty. You know, I, I am all for a Hollywood movie that ends, you know, brilliantly. And that's just a great story, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's fantastic for him. He's been through a tough period at the moment. And to get a clean sheet and three points and a, a win bonus uh, will make it a little bit better for him. For Livingston, it's a massive result. I think, you know, we've written them off. I've written them off. But to be fair to Lee, he's still thought that Ross County couldn't be caught but she's looking not a bad shout now because they cannot pick up a win. Livingston won against Patrick Thistle, gave them a bit of confidence, you know, won on Saturday against a St Mern team that's going well. All of a sudden, they're only three points behind Peter, they're not cut adrift and I think they play each other at the weekend which is just an absolute massive game for both <coughs> and if Livingston win that, then all the momentum's with them as well and it's just amazing that they've went so long without winning a game and they've got a possibility to draw a level with Ross County but it shows you how bad they've been to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. I'm and sticking, I'm sticking. Tell me the manager Monday is Davy. Davy Martindale. No, no, we've had him before. Um, Can we get him in again? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, to be fair, we, we, usually, 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 when the ma usually, usually when the manager comes in, <laughs> you know, the, the fortunes of the, have changed. I'll tell you one thing, I'd love to see your face of Philippe sitting here oh, in the chair. Right. <laughs> for, the next, for the next month. <laughs> Um, I uh, so, um, <laughs> uh, did you? Yeah. Do you like him? Yeah. Yeah. Met him a few times. Very yeah. grounded. Yeah. Good man. And I think it's a ref his team's a reflection of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, short and sharp from not, not wanting to elaborate too much there, um, uh, Lee. Um, as far as David Martindale's concerned, Tam's already mentioned, it's massive for them at the weekend coming up. Um, and he says him and uh, his players are ready for it. Does he feel any different, if I'm honest? Um, I, I, I generally don't, I'm not sitting here any different for what I would be sitting here when we win a game of football. Uh, lose a game of football, win, lose or draw today, I'd have came in here ready to go again for Ross County. Um, so nah, I, I'm happy for the group, I think, as a group, I think we've played better and lost games of football. Yeah, um, well, who cares? Mm. He'll be at that point now. We've won it. Let's celebrate it. Let's go home and enjoy a wee nightcap. Brilliant. They've not won a lot of games this season, Peter. And I see what an opportunity they've got at the weekend to go and up to up to Dingwall and, and draw level with them. Um, that's a huge game for both clubs, clearly. Uh, and if Livingston win that, the momentum's with them and, and Ross County without a manager as well. You know they look a bit rudderless at the moment. So I think Livingston can sniff it. They can sniff getting back into this. What about St Mirren? I mean, fans arguing with the manager. I mean, for God's sake, Ruffy, what, what, what are they hoping for? I think it was one guy. Yeah. You know, and well, unfortunately, I know, but I mean, I don't think it was a bulk of, you know, half the stand or something like that, but obviously Stephen has identified that and he's got every right if he wants to express how he feels. If uh, I don't know what the guy was saying or what he had said or anything, but you're right, just about what you were going to say there. If there's fans out there not happy with the way St Mirren have been playing this year, then there are no real fans as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and that's what uh, St Mirren's assistant Dermot O'Carroll said as well. People are passionate about the game. Uh, it's a passionate game from our side, passionate game from the fan side. From, um, from a fan's perspective, you come, you pay your money, 
you support the team and you obviously want them to win. From our side of things, we can't ask much more. Um, I think it was 64% possession, 20 odd shots at goal. As I said, it was one of those days it didn't fall for us in front of goal. Um, I think to question anyone's heart and, and anything else, is something that is always going to rub people up the wrong way. Um, when, in fairness to the boys, they were they were right at it from minute one, and on any other day, I think we win that game based on chances. Well, they did have chances as well, Robbie, didn't they? Yeah, I thought they should have won the game. Uh, I think that's another thing. Although the guy was maybe venting his his anger, I think deep down he'd be upset that they never took something out of that game because they certainly did have enough chances. Obviously, with the penalty and, and other occasions as well, they just couldn't. One of the days, they just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. Okay, um, what about the Premiership table? Here's how it looks uh, at the moment. I think the general consensus, Ruffy, I think Tom, myself, Lee, reckon that that was a pivotal moment over the weekend and that we think Rangers are going to win the title. Are you changing? Uh, no, at this precise moment in time, I don't think you can change. I think we've already discussed it, that everything is uh, pointing towards Rangers. Yeah, Are you? did you say Rangers at the start though? No, I think I said Celtic. So you are changing. <laughs> so I'm not changing. I think there's still a lot to play for, but the momentum is with Rangers. Yeah, so do you think they'll win it? Well, you know, I'm not putting me on the spot <laughs> like that. It's just no, a, it's just said, we've just said, I tipped Celtic to win it, and I thought, yeah, they'd, win it. I thought they'd win it by 10 points with the manager no, that they have. You know, I know you'd ask me to put but I'm, I'm looking at the situation. <laughs> He's looking for a fence. I'm looking for... <laughs> Well, Rangers winning league, Ruffy. No, I'll stick, I'll stick with Celtic. You're going to stick with I'll Celtic? Stick with well, Celtic. That's, like that's the thing. And my other it. opinion is, and I, sp I said two or three weeks ago, two Premiership teams will be in the Championship next year. Yeah, because you think the playoff team will go down yeah. as well. Yeah. Right, OK. Um, so, we've changed our opinion. You know, we could end up with egg in our face. I mean, I'm quite happy for Brendan Rodgers to give his pelters to him as well if it all goes... No, you, you, know. might, you might be proven right at the end of the season, Peter. Yeah. Just tweet. Yep, absolutely. Well, <laughs> I don't think there's any, is there any more clubs I can get banned from, Ruffy. <laughs> um, what about the predictor? What about the predictor? Wow. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Tam is up there. Ruffy's yeah, close in behind that. him. Um, and then I am moving in the right direction, boys. I'm having a good week. Uh, Lee, you're in behind me. And then it's Alison and Kerry is at 248. Is there 250 it's, people on it? How many is that? Kerry, is Kerry on the meal then? She's got a happy meal. There's about 700 in it. Oh, is there actually? So I think, uh, I think McDonald's in, isn't it? So it's, um, <laughs> it's looking good uh, at the latest predictor. And, or any uh, other. Fast food. Fast food. Uh, Sorry, very, some of them start your well. BBC oh. stuff. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, Ruffy. Brilliant. Um, yep. So, from the predictor, uh, what about down south? Just a quick look as uh, Liverpool top the table. Are they going to win it? I tell you what, some title race this season, Peter. Um, I think all three clubs have got a chance. It's difficult to call it at the minute. Man City dropped two points Did at the you weekend. Watch Man City. Haaland's yeah. um, chance. Aye, he missed. He, 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 oh, he's that's aye. What it tells you it's like. But it's going to be. It's going to be a great, great title race. Uh, but I think Man City will still win it. You're still going with Man City. Yeah, I'm yeah. Going to, I'm going to stick with the pool, uh, Ruffy. I'm, oh, I'm Man City. Yeah, Man City. I'm, I'm going to go down and see them shortly, and speak to one of your old mates. Okay. And Kenny, just say to him, get your finger out. <laughs> Don't blow this. You can do it to see Kenny. Uh, I'm going to go down and see Liverpool, yeah. Oh, all right. And uh, obviously have a wee, a wee jar. Free bit. See if they're, well, you'd know all about that, by the way. Um, <laughs> who are you saying is going to win it? Man City. Ruffy? Man City. Right, Man City. Okay. Well, I hope you three are wrong. Um, what about, just before we finish, Ruffy, what about Bayern Munich? Uh, I mean, Harry Kane's a joke, bigger Jonah than me. It's absolutely incredible, isn't it? I mean, I don't know what more he has to do. He's, he's not going to win a trophy in his career. He's going to buy him. He's going to be the top goal scorer as well, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, and they, threw, they, were, they were throwing tennis <laughs> balls onto the pitch. They're not happy. I think there's a real power struggle in the background because obviously, you know, I, I think there's a private equity investor who's looking to get involved. And Bayern Munich have never been that way in their structure. Mm. You know, the fans have had a, a major say in the, the uh, and I don't think they're too happy with the way the club is looking at trying to get money. But I'll tell you right now, I'm not in the least bit surprised that clubs like Bayern Munich and others are looking for investment elsewhere because... Can't the, compete. The Premier League is forcing clubs down into areas where they try and get... Yeah. extra money to compete will Bayern Munich win 
the Champions League. You know, are they oh, capable? Season. Exactly. Mm. That's that's the problem. The demands of Bayern Munich are not win the Bundesliga. They've won it eleven mm. seasons in a row. No, no, but it's win the Champions League. That's what happens when you're a team like that who has got that uh, achievement record. You know, the fans expect it to happen all the time. Uh, as you would said, the financial side it makes it a wee bit harder on them, but they'll still want to be there uh, and win things like everybody else. Yeah. What, what was this? What was this? Throwing the tennis balls on them. What was that about? I think, trying to make a racket. I think. I think that. Oh, Deary me, right at the end as well. We nearly got to the end of the program. <laughs> you know what I mean? a low blow. It, it's really a, it's a bad one, isn't it? Um, anyway, <laughs> on that, another thing about it as well. I think most people won't probably be able to see it because. We always like everybody to try and wear a PLZ yes. uh, bit of gear, roughly, to show their support. Yeah. But sometimes somebody tries to wear their mate's gear. But if you're going to wear your mate's gear, <laughs> try not to wear a medium when clearly you, need, <laughs> clearly you need a wee bit of room in it. He's been struggling to breathe in that. I've thought to myself, at times he's not going to get the sentence out. He's been toiling. You can't order a medium if you can't fit into it. You've just got to let it go. Still get in there. Absolutely. OK, good luck when the baby comes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, apart from anything else, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, of course, you can see Lee on a regular basis, Neil Lennon, Hugh McDonald, Alison McConnell, uh, Tam and Ruffy as well. We've got the journal show, we've got the women's football show. We've got Straight Talk this week, Ruffy, with that, an old friend of yours wow. is on the show, uh, Nicholas McDonald is on. Yeah, singer. Had, the singer. Oh, we yes. had Nicholas a wee back when he... Came to stardom. Uh, yeah. What was it he won? He won. He was runner up in X Factor. Aye, and he came Sam on and Bailey. he sang on the show. So yeah. Did he? And by the way, I must show you the. I'm going to put it out <laughs> on social media. He's a motherboard boy, isn't he? He is a motherboard yes. boy. But not only that, by the way, when he was singing uh, the song from Twilight, I think it's a thousand years, um, Ruffy was looking at him and, and he was miming the words to the song <laughs> while on Why camera honestly it was like Clive Dunn granddad <laughs> looking over his great grandson singing it was absolutely priceless you've got to see it fantastic anyway he takes us through the whole back room of the the madness of X Factor it is a right good listen he's that a really nice funny guy well. great lad okay. really talented anyway well worth that as well and we've got lots of special features including a, a longer interview Adam Binney has been interviewing Frank McAvenny out there at Celtic Park and uh, Frank talking about the current state of the team there's lots of one to ones and special interviews coming up that I know you're going to enjoy hit the subscribe button and come and join the football family from Ruffy, uh, Lee, Tam and myself, Peter Martin. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching.